Hello friends, welcome back to Quantum Quandary. Today we're going to calculate the Christoffel symbols of the um, metric on the round sphere. So I've given the metric here, um, and it's inverse in matrix form. So I'll recall you um, that the Christoffel symbols are defined as in uh, index notation <coughs> as the following. where I've used index uh, notation in the sense that um, I'm summing over repeated indices. So B is summed over, for example, um, over one and two or theta and phi. So if, um, if I want to you know, do this <coughs> intelligently, which I do because otherwise there would be um, eight separate calculations, right? Two to the three. Um, I should note that GAB is GBA, right? <clears throat> so it's symmetric. I should also note that uh, DA G theta theta is zero for A equals A, uh, either theta or phi, right? So both indices will give me zero. And uh, d phi of g a b is zero for, well, actually I could write here theta b for a b in theta phi, <clears throat> and here for um, a b in theta phi again. So in particular, none of the coefficients of the metric depend on phi, and only the um, phi component depends on theta. So in particular, I have the g theta, uh, d theta g phi phi is two sine theta cosine theta. Okay, so this will be the only uh, component that survives. And because this is the only component that survives, uh, I will immediately simplify my formula. So I'll go term by term and I'll have on the first term and the second term, I'll have something like, uh, well, the A and B will collapse into um, theta derivatives. So for the first term, I write the Kronecker delta, uh, Kronecker delta like this. So um, I'll have D theta G. Now uh, B and D have to be phi. So Kronecker delta phi collapses the B into phi. And then the D has to also be a phi for this to be non-zero. So what I have left is the G, D is phi, therefore C also has to be phi. So I have the Kronecker delta that collapses C into phi. Okay. <clears throat> now I have the same term, except with A and B exchanged. This is the. This is because of the um, symmetry with these two and exchanging A and B, and then I have the third term. So now D is what collapses to theta, which means that C collapses to theta. So I have something like this. Again, I'll have D theta G phi phi. So now A and B are phi phi. So I have d a phi d b phi and the metric in front is theta theta the inverse metric is from this d which had to be theta okay and now um okay so we we have calculated this term so i'll just plug that in and also um, well, I can now write them out individually, right? So uh, I now know that g theta phi phi, this is the first term, is um, sine theta cosine theta times g phi phi, which is sine squared theta inverse, right? One over sine squared theta, which is just cotangent theta. 
And I know by symmetry that this is gamma phi theta phi, which is the second term. And now the, the third term, again, the one half cancels with the derivative of sine squared, the, the two in the derivative of sine squared. And now the final one, g phi phi theta, is going to be g theta theta inverse, which is just one. And then the derivative without the factor of two and the minus sign. <clears throat> okay, and that's it. Those are the Christoffel uh, coefficients, Christoffel symbols of the Thomas group. Hope you guys like this quick video. I'll make another one for some more metrics. <laughs>